I guess you must remember Scrat, the little saber-toothed squirrel from Ice Age. Although he was never part of Sid, Diego, and Manny's pack, and we only know his name thanks to his merchandise and official comments, Scrat was present throughout the saga, being in fact the cause of almost everything that happened. If you think about it, it's very unlikely that something like this would happen to a single squirrel, so it's not uncommon that the internet has a long series of theories where he is given roles as a horseman of the apocalypse, a god, or literally an alien. Which sounds very unhinged. But honestly, some of those theories have very, very solid arguments. So in this video, we will seek to reveal the truth behind Scrat. Who or what exactly he is, and what was his real role in the Ice Age. Along with that strange acorn he carries everywhere. The first thing we must do is to give a very brief review about Scrat. During the first movie, the peculiar squirrel is looking for a place where he can bury his acorn to hide it while he finds more food. But after trying to bury it in a mountain glacier, it breaks and Scrat proceeds to flee to avoid being crushed, prioritizing the safety of his acorn, which he half succeeds, after surviving some falls and being crushed by a macrokinia. This could basically summarize in a general way how his adventures are, because after losing his acorn due to several accidents, he ends up recovering it or getting a new one in a never-ending cycle. Only that the complexity of these adventures gets higher and higher which pushes Scrat beyond his limits. For example, in the second film, after causing giant ice walls to melt, Scrat embarks on an odyssey to retrieve his acorn in a race against time. But by the last act of the film, he dies after a big fall, where he ends up drowning. In fact, the last scene allows us to see him enter a kind of afterlife, a squirrel heaven full of acorns everywhere. But to his bad luck, Sid the Sloth manages to resuscitate him, with mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing, snatching the huge loot he had in the sky. In the third film, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, we finally see another member of the same species, a saber-toothed squirrel known as Scraty. Throughout this third film, the two fight to take the acorn, but Scrat ends up falling in love with the other squirrel, and for a brief period, he even decides to put aside his obsession with acorns to have a normal life with her. Eventually, he gets bored, and goes back to his old ways, leaving Scraty trapped in the dinosaur underworld. And so we come to the fourth installment, which was the one that started this whole mythical role around the squirrel. Here we discover that Scrat was responsible for dividing Pangaea into the continents we know today, manipulating the very core of the earth. He is then thrown into the crust, where he lands in the ocean, and to make a long story short, ends up finding a map that will lead him to a place where a treasure trove of acorns is hidden. By the end of the film, Scrat manages to enter Scratlantis, an island in the middle of the ocean formed by giant rocks that resemble the appearance of an acorn. Scrat is greeted by another squirrel, Ariscratle, who is the leader of the civilization found here. Obviously this is all a reference to Greek mythology and the myth of the lost city of Atlantis, adapted for that movie saga. The place is full of acorns everywhere, which fills Scrat with madness, who can't keep up with so many acorns, and in a matter of seconds, proceeds to disturb the tranquility of the place for all the saber-toothed squirrels. Ariscratle tries to curb Scrat's madness, telling him that he needs to put his more primitive animal desires of chasing acorns first. But Scrat's obsession went too far, and he ends up removing a giant acorn from the ground, which was actually a kind of plug, which after removing it proceeds to flood the whole town. To Scratlantis we will return in a moment, but to finish the summary, in collision course, Scrat lives his adventure completely isolated from the rest of the characters during the whole plot. This is because at the beginning, Scrat ends up falling into a cave, where by burying his acorn, he accidentally activates a UFO that had been frozen for centuries. The weird thing is that the key to turn on the UFO was an acorn. Being a super advanced technology, Scrat does not quite understand how to manipulate it, so he gets trapped in a ship that takes him into space and accidentally creates the solar system. From here on, we see how Scrat manages to try to recover his food as always, but the movie ends with him still trapped in space. The thing with this character is that there are some deleted scenes and extra shorts on the DVDs that tell us more about his origin. You see, user Scrat the Prophet on the fan theories' subreddit posted a couple of years ago, a theory where he tries to explain why we don't see humans anymore after the first movie. And I know that by this point, many of you will have heard about the popular theory that tells us about the inverted chronology. That is, that in reality, the order in which you should watch the movies is first collision course, then continental drift and so on, and so on, watching everything backwards until you get to the first part where Pinky comes out. And although this from a certain perspective would make sense, since the logical thing is that first there was the creation of the solar system as in collision course, 
And for the last film, there are finally humans. There are many points that contradict the theory, mainly the development of relationships and characters of the films. And of course the fact that obviously the story of the saga goes forward and not the other way around. In addition, a spin-off movie with the character of Buck as the main character recently came out on Disney+. And right at the beginning of that movie, Ellie, Manny's girlfriend, tells us about the origin of the herd, mentioning after 20 years the human baby that started it all. So this theory obviously doesn't work. At all. Back to the Scrat the Prophet theory then. It turns out that as a bonus on the DVD of the second film, there was a short film entitled No Time for Nuts. In this animation we are shown that on one of his adventures, Scrap ended up accidentally finding a time machine in a cave, a small artifact in the hand of a human corpse. But not of a primitive human, but of a person wearing a modern robe. This human, it seems, ended up frozen by accident during the Ice Age, and with his artifact buried next to him. Scrap, not knowing what it is, or having any idea how to use a time machine, begins to make several trips to different eras, even creating a hole in space-time, causing a disorder in the timelines. And although an ordinary squirrel should not be able to do all this, in the end it is not Scrap's fault, but the fault of the species that created the time machine, and was so irresponsible that by a mistake they left this machine within its reach. This event has many consequences, among which, obviously, is the disorder in the events of the following movies. That is why Pangea still exists by the time we get to the fourth movie, and that is why the solar system had not been created until the fifth part, because having interfered with the timeline, so many things changed, which brings us to the best part of the theory, the wrath of God. You may have noticed that in the movies, well, it's not relevant to the story the existence of God, but on Reddit, Whoever writes the theory mentions to us that it's rather curious that the cataclysm in the second movie is a gigantic flood. It's oddly biblical, and it's suspiciously identical to the cataclysm that God used to wipe out almost all of humanity in the Bible, the Great Flood, and just humans disappear after that. Yes, this seems to point to what we saw in Ice Age 2 actually being the biblical flood, which would be a divine punishment that comes after future humanity allowed the space-time chaos that Scrat creates with the time machine. It would basically be God's way of preventing humans from affecting a more delicate balance of his creation. And here comes the wackiest part of the theory, which is why I need your attention. We always assume that it's Scrat who makes everything happen in the movies, but if we think about it, that's not the case. Let me explain. The hole that causes the giant flood was caused by an acorn. It was also thanks to an acorn that Scrat managed to pierce through all the layers of the earth until he reached the core, causing the supercontinent to be split abruptly and not progressively as history has taught us. And it was the acorn that triggered the UFO that almost caused a meteor shower that would have wiped out the entire main herd in the movies. It's always an acorn. On the other hand, the squirrel inhabitants of Scratlantis formed a utopian and advanced society dedicated not to eating or hiding acorns but to study them, appreciate them and capture them in different forms of art. They even revere them. And they must have discovered something, because that Greek squirrel that welcomes Scrat can talk just fine, unlike Scrat. And it's not just them. As part of the Collision Course DVD, there are extra scenes where we see how the ship where the squirrel travels is eventually absorbed by a mother ship that has a giant acorn shape which belongs to none other than another society of squirrels, an alien and more advanced version of the normal squirrels, and they come to be the squirrel version of the Amazons. Apparently, these squirrels are possibly responsible for planting the seeds of the saber-head squirrel species on Earth, and as they use acorns as a source of power, they also planted acorns to collect them later, which is why they made several explorations to Earth in the past, leaving some ships that had the mission to collect these objects, such as the ship of Collision Course, or even the frozen UFO that we see in the first movie. As if that were not enough, they created the underworld of dinosaurs and left, listen well, temples made in the image and likeness of acorns, as we saw in the Scratch Nutty Adventure video game. If such an advanced species has the acorn on a pedestal, and uses it for not only scientific purposes, but also praises it, it is because it clearly has attributes beyond our comprehension. The latest confirmation appears again in Ice Age 2. Remember when Scratch arrives in the sky? And how it's full of acorns everywhere but there's no god? 
Yes, there's only one giant glowing acorn in the center. The same acorn that appears as a symbol on the gates of heaven. Now it seems obvious, doesn't it? Scratch is not God. The acorn is. After all, a normal acorn shouldn't cause holes that take out glaciers, or activate volcanoes, or allow you to pierce the layers of the earth. Right? We thought it was cartoon logic, but that's not it. God is an acorn. And they showed it to us very, very clearly. Only it was so ridiculous that we didn't even consider it. This even complements quite nicely with other theories, where reference is made to Scratch possibly being one of the horsemen of the apocalypse. Since wherever he travels, he always brings misfortune with him, like all those natural disasters. Possibly Scratch's fate was tied to God's will, being chosen by our Acorn Lord when he accidentally traveled through space-time, and is now used to carry out his will. This would also make sense of the fact that Scratch always survived the impossible, even coming back from the dead several times, as we saw during the second movie, where after reaching heaven, he is returned to the earthly world. This, as we already know, happened partly thanks to Sid, but it also happened because he had not yet finished causing all the natural disasters he was destined to carry out. In one of his latest Scray shorts, where he appears with his son, Baby Scrat, we see how our beloved squirrel passes away, giving us a scene where his soul is detached from his body, but after a moment of fury and willpower, he is able to reintroduce his soul back into his body, so he clearly has some level of authority before Mother Nature, with total control over death, making a very strange parallel to Jesus Christ. Especially for that time he died for our sins making the shape of a cross, but maybe I'm already overanalyzing it too much. So, I hope you liked this strange and religious video, like it if you did and subscribe for more videos like this, and I'm off before I get married for being a heretic. Bye!